everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. I also want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited about this video today because we're going to turn this space here behind me into one that has tons of storage and tons of organization. This is our brand new pantry. This is basically a big Ikea hack, one of my most favorite to date. I have a whole playlist and I'll also link this video down in the description box if you want to go back and rewatch that. I show you how you can build your own pantry slash Ikea hack. And, but today we're gonna dive inside this cabinet. I wanna show you how simple and easy it is to create lots of functional space out of empty shelves. So let me first show you some of those items that I purchased that will make this space extra functional. We're also gonna personalize it to make it even more accessible. So let's go ahead and dive right into this extreme pantry makeover. So my first tip here is just gather all the items that you're hoping to use for storage and organization within your pantry. So some of these items are from around my house, some I ordered, some I got on sale, and I'll try to link as many as I can down in the description box. But here's a blank space kind of look before we even get started. And a few of these items may shock you a little bit. These baskets are actually for the back of your toilet for toilet paper, but you kind of have to think outside the box sometimes. Our pantry is only seven and a half inches deep, so I had to find something that would fit. These were the winner, and I'll link those down below too. You can find them on the Amazon. And these con containers, I already know I'm probably gonna have to purchase more. They're from Ikea. I only purchased five of them, I believe, and I'm absolutely gonna need more, but this is a great part of planning your pantry. So you're kind of setting it up before you're actually adding food. These glass containers are from Ikea too. I love them because they have the airtight seal on them and they are clear so you can see what's in them and see if you're needing more of something if you're running out. So I put a whole shelf of those and now we're gonna move down to the bottom. So these shelves were kind of spaced a little bit more farther apart and I wanted to still be able to store smaller items so I found these clear stacking bins or containers. I got a few of those so that way you can still store things like jello and puddings and that kind of thing. I also incorporated my Ray Dunn containers which I will be reworking a little bit here shortly. And then these glass containers have really nice wood lids on them. These are from Hobby Lobby actually and I got them for 66% off on a really great sale. Some are going to be for storage, some are going to be for leftovers and for meal prep kind of thing. Also, I had this idea that I wanted to put some of my plates in here, but unfortunately it's not deep enough. So I'm gonna use utilize those plate racks a little bit differently and I'll show you that here shortly. And then just added some, like a plant that I already had, a container that I already had for recipes on the shelf to fill space but you'll see soon here how this all sort of comes together and how I kind of change things around and how it all works out. But here's just kind of a general setup and idea of what I was hoping for. Now I'm going to break out my Cricut Explore 3. This is what's going to take my pantry to a whole new level. I'm getting out some of my colorful cardstock. I wanted to create some recipe cards to go into that container that was next to my plant. So I loaded a design onto my Cricut Design Space. I added my cardstock onto my green cutting mat, loaded it into my Explore 3, and let it do its job. You just hit this play button and it does all the work for you. Super duper quick and fast. It does all of the adjusting for you once you click cardstock in your design space. And here I have custom recipe cards that I can either use to divide up some of my family recipes or if I wanna write directly on these, I can write new recipes on them too. Another tip is to make a list of all the food and in what containers so that way you can go over to your Cricut Design Space for labeling. I'll make sure to put the fonts that I'm using down in the description box below too. And the cool thing about the Cricut Explore 3 is we no longer have to use a cutting mat. You still have that option and capability, but if you're using their smart materials, then you don't have to use a mat anymore, which makes the process go much more quickly. And this little gadget, this is an extra accessory you can purchase too. 
and it holds your vinyl and it has a built-in trimmer. So it makes it even more quick for you to just cut and go and get onto your project. So here I'm just weeding out all of the excess vinyl, the parts that I do not want on my labels. And then once I had that all ready to go, I just put on some transfer tape and then transferred my vinyl right onto the fronts of my containers. And sorry for the blurriness, this was focusing on the baking soda container instead of my decal here, but you can see how quick it comes right off. This is removable vinyl, so if you ever change your mind and you wanna put something else in these containers, it's easy to remove those and change them out. So now we're gonna work on those clear, tall containers. We're gonna add some pastas and cereals and oatmeal into here. So these are all pre-cut and ready to go. I, again, will put the font I used down in the description box. And I'm just adding this vinyl up the side. And this is why I'm saying I'm probably gonna need more of these because we have a lot of cereal and we're probably gonna use these for chips and things. So I'm glad that there's some extra space within the pantry to expand. Next, we're going to label those clear airtight containers with sort of some baking supplies and some breakfast items. And again, just pre-made those in my Cricut Design Space and really simply just applying these to the fronts of those jars. I think this just really makes it go from sort of plain to very high-end looking with a simple font right on the front. And I also really love that they are clear so you can see when you're running low on those staple items. Next, I wanted to label the baskets, but I didn't have any wooden nice tags, so I decided to make my own. In Cricut Design Space, this is just one of their images that you can find in their gallery, and cut it out with some simple white cardstock. You can even add vinyl to cardstock, and I love that. So what I'm doing here is just removing those tags right off of my mat using the same mat to put a scrap piece of vinyl onto and cut out my label. So yes, you can even add vinyl to your cardstock, but one of my tips for this is to actually be really gentle. Don't, don't push it down like you would on a hard surface. Just kind of go over it gently with your finger just where your vinyl is so that way you don't have any rips when it comes to removing that transfer tape. Then to attach these tags to the fronts of the baskets, this is just uh, peel and stick double-sided foam mount tape or pop dot stickers. And I just put those on the corners of the labels and stuck those right to the fronts of the baskets. This has definitely been a game changer. My kiddos now know where to go specifically for breakfast and for snacks. And I also have some of my baking items like cupcake liners and sprinkles at the top. Now this one I am so proud of and I can't wait to share this one with you. These are cute little spice jars I found on Amazon and we're gonna make custom labels for these. I was bound and determined to figure this out. This is actually a printable vinyl you can get from Cricut. I will link it down below. Awesome stuff, you literally can just print on it and cut it out. So this is a design that I made in my Photoshop and then I'm going to upload it into my Cricut Design Space, clicking complex whenever I load it. And then once you have that there, you can hit print then cut because we want this to print before it cuts it out. So I inserted each one of these into my program before sending it over to my printer. And I did have to do a few at one time, not all of them at one time, because you only have a select amount of space that you can do this in. Just make sure you load your vinyl in your printer correctly so it, mine goes in upside down and prints right side up. And then you will have this box that will also print around your design before you add it onto your mat send it through your machine. It recognizes those that big box around your design before going in and then cutting out those labels for you. Yep, I was super proud of these little stickers. But the good thing about these is it's not really a sticker, even though they go on like a sticker, they're vinyl. So they aren't going to like smudge 
or kind of get destroyed when you're baking and cooking and your hands are wet because it's more of like a plastic label for these. And then you can go ahead and just add your spices to these jars. And I was just mind blown at the difference in how much we had and how confusing it was to find different spices versus now how nice it looks, high end it looks, and how easy it's going to be to find those spices that we use regularly. Then I also had a, tr a lot of trouble finding a spice rack that would fit into our space. A lot of them were much too deep, so I decided to sort of make my own little tiered shelf for them to sit on. This is just extra MDF that I had on hand from building the pantry. Cut them down to size, used some super glue, pushed the super glue down. It takes like eight seconds for this stuff to set up. And then I had a really quick and easy custom spice rack holder and just added my little spices onto here moved it into place and it just looked really really nice i do think i might add another shelf onto here so i can add more spices in the future i would love to hear how you all store your spices because i feel like there's some really great ideas out there and i've never really found one that was a great utilization. Hopefully this will work, but let me know how you guys store your spices down in the comments below. So once I started adding food in here, I had a bunch of seasoning packets. This is yeast and like soups that I put in those little plate racks. I also added some new decals onto the fronts of my Ray Dunn containers and just got every all of the boxes, everything out of boxes, everything out of the bags. And you would not believe how much stuff actually fit into the space once you start taking stuff out of their original containers and condensing it down. I also had added a couple of these Lazy Susans to kind of make it easy to grab things instead of stuff falling over as, and knocking it down, trying to get to stuff in the back. So that was a nice little addition and a tip for you all is to add some Lazy Susans into your storage. But everything just kind of seemed to come together. I know we're going to make some adjustments, but this is a great start and definitely a huge improvement over the crazy deep black hole cabinet that we were using. So from empty shelves to ones that are super duper organized with lots of storage, I would love to hear you all's pantry organization tips. You can leave those in the comments below for me. Subscribe if you are new, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll have more organization videos popping up on your screen that you can check out next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.